Hello everybody, in today's reporting quickly we'll be looking at the often misunderstood discussion section. The contents of today's lecture will focus on what the discussion is and why it's important. It will then examine two examples of different qualities to highlight the common errors and some elements of good practice. Then finishing off the episode we'll look at some further resources to help improve your discussion. So why discussion? The discussion is crucial to getting a good grade. This section can often be worth the most significant percentage in waiting. As such, it's a shame when someone gets it wrong. Often students think the discussion is simply analysis of results, yet it's more than just that. You've got to say how well you've met your aims, how your approach helped or hindered the process. This is where your results, be them good or as expected or even not, use these as evidence for accomplishing your aims. And throughout all this, you've got to be critical. Here's an example marking rubric for discussion section. From this rubric you can see the criteria, calls for consideration for previous chapters, sections. From this rubric you can see the cr criteria. From this rubric you can see the criteria calls for consideration for the previous chapters. Consideration for this project as a whole, detailed self-reflection and arrival at a conclusion. However, remember the discussion is not a conclusion. So as you can see, there's a lot to expect from the discussion, so let's tackle this one by one. Consideration of the previous section requires you to bring through your introduction, aims, methodology and results elements to inform your discussion. What did the literature say? What did you attempt to do? How did the methodology attempt to do this? Did the results reflect those referenced in your introduction? And so on. If you can bring this all back on itself, dovetailing where appropriate, your discussion will be looking pretty good. Consideration for the project as a whole requires you to think about the overall aim. Did you accomplish what you set out to do? If so, or even not, what does this mean? Let's say you identified the most effective open source vulnerability scanner. Well, perhaps you can recommend it to those with a tight security budget, perhaps a small medium enterprise. So once you've got to this main point, this thing that you've identified or whatever in your project, say so what? Well, detailed self-reflection is in part and parcel of the previous two points. Coming to a conclusion may be a challenge. By structuring your discussion correctly, this is much more easier. Look to the mirror your aims section. Or look to mirror your aims section. Start with your sub-aims, then eventually tie these into broader conversation regarding your overall aim. Start with your, each of your sub-aims, then eventually tie these into your broader conversation regarding your overall aim. Rather than a full discussion chapter or a vague excerpt, I'm going to use an example feedback section just to spark this discussion here. Here's our poor examples feedback concerning a web app scanner evaluation project. From the first point we can see here, this example makes the classical error of confusing the discussion with a more traditional conclusion chapter. They are very different and perform different jobs. The discussion still contains new content, while the conclusion doesn't. That's the easiest way to distinguish it. Don't make the same mistake when you come to do your discussion. You can see from the second point, the discussion fails to pull the strands from the rest of the document. It only succeeds in pulling strands from the results, as they've analysed the results, but they've not really told me about how they got to the results and was the methodology appropriate for what they were doing. You've got to be comprehensive, not neglecting these extra sections. You've got to get all of your sections before that in there. And the third comment is a standard one. Make sure you've got references in there. Make sure to bring the crucial references as well, the ones that really matter, the ones that are pivotal and kind of central to the overall theme of your paper. Make sure they're also present in your discussion. Overall, this example appears to need significant revision as such, it wouldn't receive a good mark. Here's a decent example. This one is looking at creating and comparing a network mapper written in Go. So the first point shows the discussion is too short. The, there is no rule of thumb for length, but try to make it worth the waiting. If it's worth 25%, it doesn't have to be 25% of the overall paper, but it should be kind of worth what it's weighted at. You don't want like a, a two-page discussion when it's worth a quarter of the overall report kind of thing. You want to make sure that you're, there's a little bit more to chew on. 
The second point focuses on the pull and the strands from the rest of the document. This exemplar does better than the poor example, but it doesn't pull in strands from the background. This may have knock-on consequences following the with the following comment, which talks about the lack of references. And our third comment here is to remember to add some critical analysis. Somehow this exemplar managed to do most of what's needed, but forgot to do this fundamental step. Critical analysis is necessary in your discussion. Overall, this example would achieve an okay mark. It's just a little bit too short and lacks the, the critical analysis. With some revision, it could be on its way to get a really good mark. Before we get into the further resources, I've got a quick tip to help your discussion. I did touch on this before, but hopefully I can better explain it here. So in this slide, I've got a graphical representation of what a structure of the discussion may look like. On the right-hand side here, you can see you start the discussion by restating the overall broad aim of the project. Then chronologically examine each sub-aim. Restating the sub-aim at the start of your paragraph, discuss what you've done in the methodology, what your results have achieved from this methodology, and then does this align or conflict with any existing literature? Is there anything now that you can say about literature that you wouldn't be able to say before you did the results? Is there something you may want to kind of say that maybe this literature is a more um, better to go in this kind of direction? This is just one way to structure a discussion. It might be more appropriate for those doing independent research. So if you're doing something different, try experimenting. Finally, here are some great resources to have a flick through. As per usual, make sure you have a perusal of Phrase Bank. It's very good when it comes to the discussion chapter. So let's summarise this reporting quickie episode. We have focused on discussion. We have covered what is and isn't a discussion. For examples, we've identified common mistakes and some good practices which you can learn from, take away and implement into your discussion. And for a quick tip and some ample additional resources, we've put the ball in your court to go away and work on your discussion to hopefully get a great mark. That's been all from me. I hope you enjoyed this episode and good luck.